Hey everyone. So I just wanted to start this video out with just a few things and then I just want to get into um, just our thank yous and all that good stuff. But this morning I was in prayer and I had asked the Lord for something. I just said anything. Just give me a sign where we're at. Whatever you want to give me, just give it to me. And um, not long after that, you guys, I got on my computer and I've told you guys this before, when I go, it seems for the last couple months, every time I go to Google, pretty much every day, there's something about the end times or the rapture or something on the Google news page. And the first thing that popped up on Google this morning was no more delay. And it had the scripture Revelation 10, 1 through 11. So to me, that is just, I believe it's from the Lord and he's telling us there is no more time. And as you guys know um, from my previous video with my elderly client saying the storm is coming, um, I was thinking about the Trump speech that he made because we've all been talking about the calm before the storm. And I'm just, I was thinking about what he had said after Hurricane Florence and I know he said, and it's not the exact words, but it was something like, this was big, but it's nothing compared to what's coming. So, you guys, again, just even the last couple days on YouTube, it's just, it's been nothing but the calm before the storm, the storm is coming, da 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 da, -da and um, everything that's happened in Israel, and the the hurricanes and the tornadoes and the earthquakes, you know, it's, it's just, it's increasing every single day. There's not one day that goes by that we don't have a natural disaster somewhere. So, um, Oh, let me think. And then we have the draconoid meteor shower that's happening today through the ninth. And a lot of people are pointing to October 9th. I was watching Born for Battle 74 this morning, Chris, and he does this pie thing. I don't know where the pie thing comes from. I'm not exactly sure, but it just the numbers. Um, it was Obama's numbers, then 222, and that led to this number, and that led to this number, and then it ended up on 10-9. So Chris isn't saying we're leaving on 10-9, but it was just another marker, if you want to call it that. Um, and I've said this before, you guys, the Lord is not going to wait till the last second. And we know he's been warning us for years and years and years, but the, the signs are definitely getting stronger and in our faces. And, um, now we're hearing no more delay and another confirmation this morning. And then I was watching Darla from God's Gift. And you guys, I, I swear I have dementia because I can't even remember what I had for breakfast. I'm only 44 and I shouldn't be like this. But I think just taking care of elderly people my whole life, it just kind of wore out on me. And I have some form of dementia. But anyways, I was watching Darla and she said something. I don't know if it was a dream or vision or a word she received. I'm not sure. But. Basically, the Lord said, when we see the horizon turn red, that is our sign that I think, I think the sign that Jesus was coming, that, that we, he's at the door and, and we're leaving. So I should, I guess I should have just went back and looked at her video and rewatched it. But, um, I know that was confirmed many times over. And then I had received probably about a year ago that, I had that vision where I saw the sun coming over the horizon and it was almost over the horizon. And I heard in my spirit, when the sun is over the horizon, we're leaving. And again, that was about a year ago. So guys, we're just, we're getting so, so super close. And um, I know we've been watching and waiting for a very, very long time, but you guys, the signs have never been as strong as they've ever been. It's increasing like labor pains. And um, I was watching Mark Ekawami yesterday. I believe it was yesterday. And he had Jordan Christopher on that video. And I'm sure many of you guys know who Jordan Christopher is. I don't think he had a whole lot of subscribers, but 
he receives words from the Lord. And I remember his last video, and it was back, I think, in March, and um, he just basically was done with YouTube. He felt like, like Jesus is coming, and, you know, there's just really no more messages to give. Well, then he shared with us that the Lord told him to live his life. And Jordan was just like, I don't understand, Lord. Like, why are you telling me to live my life, but you're telling me you're coming? So, yeah, we're supposed to be warning people and telling people what's happening and the signs and everything else. So why am I supposed to go live my life? Like, he just didn't understand and I think for the next couple of months, he just went into prayer and just, you know, really prayed on it. And then he said, I believe it was July 28th. And he said, I would never share this with you guys if um, I didn't believe it was from the Lord. But he wanted to share it because he was like, no doubt in his mind that this word was from the Lord. That Jesus told him that he was coming in the fall of this year so as we know fall started september 22nd and ends on december 21st and so many people just the last couple days that i've been watching um are receiving fall as well and then i had that dream not that long ago where i went to that yard sale and the lady said she had made 153 dollars well we know what 153 means so then I went in and was, you know, I was so scared to step on the white carpet and, um, and then I did and that lady was getting ready to leave just like the rest of us. And then I went out the side door and then there was all those fall leaves and then I saw that black clock and the orange clock. I could not see a time on it, but it was like all fall stuff, all Halloween stuff. And then I went to the restaurant and my grandma who passed away six years ago was there and my dad was there that passed away four years ago and my grandpa's still with us, but we were sitting in those Victorian chairs and um, anyways, I just I told my grandma and my dad that I was happy to see them, that I miss them. And then when I looked at my grandpa and I said, do you see them? And he's like, well, yeah, I see them. And then I looked back and they were gone. So, um, Again, guys, just so many things that are are pointing to this year, and I'm I'm just you guys. I don't want to be here one day longer. I'm just I'm over it. I'm ready to go home, and um, you know. But I'm just gonna keep fighting the good fight, and, and no matter what life throws at me at this point, I just have that blessed hope that I'm going home very very soon, and. Once I'm out of here, none of this matters. And it doesn't matter to me now, even with everything that's being thrown at me. Um, you know, it, it's it's a day-to-day -day struggle. And and I, I truly believe, I, I'm just sitting here thinking, I'm thinking all the time, you guys. It's I'm always talking to the Lord, always asking him to show me things, always asking him when he's coming. It's, it's every single second of every day that I'm just, it's all about Jesus. And, um, so I was just talking to him, you know, just like, why am I going through what I'm going through? And, and I, I think I understand it, you guys, because I told the Lord a long time ago, you know, I'm ready. So if you want to keep me here, then you need to keep me healthy. Because if I ever get cancer or diabetes or anything like that anything that's gonna take my life I'm not treating it and so not really thinking about it I was just like this is I'm not giving you a choice father you know like well I am you either keep me healthy or or I'm coming home you know I'm I'm not gonna take care of whatever is thrown my way you know like I'm so ready I don't I don't care at this point how I get to you I just want to get home and um but in real life I worry on a daily basis especially now with what we're going through for the last couple of months um you know it, it just slaps you in the face it's like your your life is it, it's okay you know I've never been happy happy with my life I 
I do what I do because I love what I do, taking care of um, my residents. And I just always have felt like I need a purpose and, you know, a purpose to serve the kingdom of God. And what else better to do than take care of people that need to be taken care of? And knowing that when these people are in my home, they're going to get the best quality of care. They're going to get the absolute most love that I can possibly give them. And I don't have to worry about four people. It's only four people, but it's four people that <clears throat> aren't stuck in the nursing home or stuck in another assisted living that are being abused or neglected or whatever, you know. And, and I said this a long time ago when I worked in the nursing home. Um, I would just come home crying to my husband and I said, you know, one day I'm going to change lives. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. And... I would just cry because I would see the neglect. I would see the abuse. I would see family members giving up and not coming to visit them like their family had already passed away or, you know, or they just don't talk anymore. And they're just like, well, they don't know who I am. Well, they still need love. They still need attention. Whether you sit there and hold their hand and watch a, a, a movie with them or just sit there and read the Bible to them or a book or whatever, you know, they still need a human touch they still need to be loved and um oh gosh where was I going with this <laughs> but um anyways I just needed I need a purpose in life and so I was just talking to the Lord saying you know I just I don't know what I'm gonna do you know I I've never been in this situation before if these hospitals can take away, you know, like sue me and I can lose my home, I could lose it all. What am I going to do? And I've always just kind of worried about, I'm the kind of person that doesn't worry about tomorrow or the next day. I'm thinking months in the future. And I had to learn a long time ago just to not worry about, you know, what's going to happen in a year or two from now. Where for me, this is a huge, con you know, uh, stepping stone for me. It's like, now I'm down to month by month, but I think the Lord just didn't want me going month by month. I need to focus just day by day. And now with these medical bills and everything else, you know, I just, I'm the kind of person when the bill comes in, I mail out the check the very next day. Um, I'm just always on top of my bills. And now these bills are coming in and I'm just like, Lord, you know, this is a lot for me. I just don't know how to deal with all this and so I just feel like the Lord saying, just take it day by day, just take it by day by day and I will take care of that day. And so you guys, it's, it's a hard thing that I'm having to do, but I'm doing it, you know, just taking it day by day by day. And I don't think if I had that blessed hope of the Lord coming to get us, um, I think I'd absolutely lose my mind, you know, if, if, we just, if there was no such thing as the rapture, if there was no such thing as the end, um, and we had to live out our lives till we, you know, till we passed away 80, 90 years old. Oh my gosh, if I had to even live till I was 60, I don't think I could handle it, you guys, because I'm only 44, but thinking, oh my gosh, another 16 years, I don't know if I could do it. So I don't know these you know, true Christians, true children of God that have made it to 80, 90 years old have dealt with it. And I even asked my grandpa when I took him home um, last month, I, you know, I, I just said, have you ever um, thought about dying? Have you ever wanted to just, you know, die and, and go home? And he said, never. And I said, never, you, even after losing all the people that you've lost, I mean, and when you're 90 years old, you've lost a lot of loved ones in your life. And, and he said, never, you know, I've always kept positive and, and yes, I know Jesus is coming, but I have children and I have grandchildren and I have great grandchildren that I want to continue seeing grow up as long as I can. So even though I have the hope of heaven um, I know I'm going to be with grandma again, and I know I'm going to be with your dad again. And, you know, it just, it just made me really think, you know, how selfish I was, um, 
you know, thinking with Mike, you know, because I've always even said to Mike, you know, if I get cancer, whatever, I'm out of here. I don't care. I'm not treating it. I'm going home. And then this happens to Mike. And, and then I have to put myself in his shoes and go, oh my gosh, you know, how selfish of me to sit there and think and tell you constantly, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready. However, the Lord wants to take me, blah, 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 blah. But now here you have a heart attack and I'll spend millions of dollars to keep you here with me and um, do whatever I have to do, you know, because if I lost you, I mean, you're, you're my life. You and, and Evan and Talon are my life, you know, so I think the Lord is teaching me things in that perspective of all that's happening with me now is I just need to slow my roll on what's happening as far as our bills and, and everything else. And then, um, just being awake to how other people feel and how they look at things like we just, you and me and the rest of our YouTube family, just we're focused on the Lord and getting home. But in that time from now till whenever the Lord decides to come and get us, we still have to live real life here on this planet. And we don't know when the Lord is coming. We can only hope and pray that it's today or tomorrow. You know, I know not one of you guys want to keep continuing on this, on this journey. You know, we're, we're ready. We're all extremely tired and we're all going through things, whether it is financial, whether it's health, whether it's marriage problems or problems with your kids, um, whatever it is, we're all going through things and we can't all go through the same things. And, you know, the Lord knows exactly what we need to keep us on that path. And, and I, and I'm looking at this challenge as, you know, a challenge and a test. How, how, strong is my faith how much am I going to get angry at God for the things that I'm going through and it's like no I'm not going to get angry at the Lord because none of this matters none of this material stuff matters and I've said this in my videos before you know I could care less if I drove a 20 year old vehicle or lived in an efficiency apartment um, I do have what I have because of my business. If I did not have that, if I had a normal job um, where I worked eight hours a day, then I could care less what I lived in and what I drove because having Jesus Christ in your life, um, nothing else matters. So when we look at the material stuff, it, you know, when I was still walking with the Lord, but not really walking with him, you know, I've always believed in Jesus. And if you guys have been with me a long time, I mean, I've been watching and waiting for the Lord since I was five years old, but there's times in your life where you go through that period, especially like in your twenties, you know, um, where you want a uh, brand new vehicle or you want a new pair of jeans or whatever it is, a new house, you know, the most expensive house on the block, you know, you get into the material stuff, but then when you finally awake and uh, realize what life is truly about, then none of that stuff seems to matter. And yes, we are extremely blessed. Every single one of us, um, we can't look at what we don't have. We have to um, be thankful for what we do have. If we have a roof over our head, if we can put food on the table and pay our electric bill, we're blessed. I mean, seriously, you guys, we could have been born in, you know, the Philippines or Africa or another third world country where you have to walk 10 miles a day just to get a gallon of dirty, filthy, full of parasite water and walk 10 miles back and and give this nasty water to your children and not knowing where your next meal is coming from. We truly could have been born that way. And so us that are in America or, or Australia or Canada or wherever you guys are living, if, if you have a roof over your head and food on the table, you are blessed. 
the number one thing to be blessed about is that you have Jesus Christ with you. And um, as long as we have Jesus, that's all we need, you guys. So with that said, um, you guys, I know there's just so many hurting people out there. So many of us struggling in, in so many different ways. Um, what I'm reading is a lot of financial. A lot of us are going through financial things. And um, I just wanted to tell you about a sister I was watching. And I've seen this sister many times over in the last few years. Um, her name is Tessa Gray. And she, on her YouTube, it's C.G. Gray Gray, I think it is. Um, but I've seen the sister many times over commenting. And so I know 100% in my heart that this, this lady is a true child of God. And um, the last couple days I've been able to breathe a little bit. I've had some time off. And so I was watching some videos on YouTube. And, um, and Jeannie Hardesty had did a video on this sweet lady. And she, Jeannie... You know, she's such a sweetheart, and so it's not very often you see her upset, and she was upset, and she had did a video, and I didn't watch the video, but it was about a week or two ago that she did this video, I want to say about a week ago, and she had asked us to, um, to donate to this lady because she was going through some some financial problems and some health problems and everything else and um she had asked if we could help her and when she did that video only one person had donated and it just broke Jeannie's heart and um so I commented to this lady and I and I thought, I was thinking it was this lady, and so I commented to her, and I said, please email me. And um, it, just because of the PayPal, whatever it was, I, I can't remember. It just didn't make sense under the link. And I said, if this is you, I said, please email me. And so I got to talking to this lady, and... Um, and so I explained a few things and then I told her our hardship, you know, that there are true brothers and sisters in Christ that want to help, you know, but a lot of people are really sketchy on, you know, scammers and this and that. But I know I, I've i seen you throughout the years making comments, so I, I know you're a true sister. And so I just kind of reached out to her and I emailed her and asked her if she could explain a little bit of what she's going through and and da 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 that I felt led that I was going to do a thank you video today anyways and thought I would mention her and so I'm just going to touch real quick on this you guys her name is Tessa uh, Gray and she's got a seven year old little boy she's 47 I believe she's been in uh, numerous car accidents Things have happened in her back. She's got fibromyalgia. She's got an attorney that's trying to help her get disability. She said once she gets on disability, she'll be just fine. But right now she's struggling really, really bad. And um, and she's, she's had to put money in her gas tank to get to her doctor's appointment. So even taking food out of her own mouth to make sure that she goes to the doctor and gets these cortisone shots to take the pain away. And you guys know when you, when you have pain, it's something terrible. And you'll do whatever you have to do to get rid of the pain. So when we haven't experienced that pain, I know with me, even a migraine, just I, I would do anything to get rid of the migraine. Um, but you guys know what I'm saying. Um, she's just, She's struggling really bad and she's doing whatever she can to take this pain away from her and she's putting every last dollar in her gas tank to get her there to get these shots and do these tests and this and that and so I think she's having a hard time even paying her rent and you know the sad thing is she's got a seven-year-old little boy and um, she knows that the Lord will take care of her but you guys again we're the hands and feet of the Lord and the Lord says 
whatever we do for our brothers and sisters. We do it for him. And um, we have to remember that, you guys, that everything we do, we, we can't just forget about our brothers and sisters. They're humans. They're suffering. And so many of us are suffering. Um, but the Lord also says when we give, he will give it back. And we don't give to get back, but we do it for the glory of God. We do it in honor of him. And every little dollar helps. And believe me, I can be a testimony now to this after what I've experienced the last couple months. Every dollar helps. And I just, I want to beg you guys from the bottom of my heart to help this lady. Because I know, and I know a lot of you guys know, and if you can't give, we totally understand. We totally understand. But if everybody can at least just donate $5 or $3 or whatever you can, I said every dollar adds up. If we can only give her a meal for a day, you know, $10 to feed her and her son or help her stay in her apartment or wherever she's living for one more month from keeping her electricity from going off, whatever she's going through. She didn't go into detail about everything, but if she's having a hard time putting gas in her car, I can just imagine how hard it is to put food on the table. And if she's taking food out of her own mouth to do this, we know she's struggling, you guys. And I just feel it in my spirit that we really do need to help this lady. And, um, and that I'm just going to cry out to you guys and, and ask you guys to help. And if you can, even if it's only $5, a hundred people give $5, that's $500 that can feed them for a whole month. Another $500 could pay her rent or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Just every single dollar counts. So I'm going to leave the link in the description box below. Um, what I did... I, I gave her yesterday, I, I couldn't give her a whole lot just because of my situation, but um, I gave what I could, and so what I did was I went to PayPal and I just punched in her her email address and it, it did go to her. So I'm going to leave her email address, and if you guys don't feel comfortable with that, she said she doesn't feel comfortable with leaving her address. Um, I can leave my address and you guys can send it to me and you can just put in the memo for Tessa. And I promise you I'll give her every dollar that you guys send. If you guys want to put it on my GoFundMe account, I will leave my GoFundMe link in the description box below and just put Tessa on there and I will make sure she gets every dollar of that um, or you guys can just go to PayPal on your own and punch in her email and it'll go toward to her um, but please you guys um, just pray on it ask the Lord what he wants you to give and um, and I just know he's going to touch your guys' heart just like he touched your guys' heart to help me. So I'm going to end this video with just um, thanking you guys for the help you have given Mike and I. Just your love and support and the donations and prayers. You guys, I could thank you a million times over and it's never going to be enough. I, you'll never know what this meant to me for you guys just to reach out and help a stranger. And I know I'm not a stranger to many of you guys, but, um, you know, I think this was another lesson from the Lord is that he wanted me to know that there are people out there that truly love and care about me and Mike and, and you guys just didn't hesitate. You reached into your pockets and got your checkbook and, and gave without, again, without hesitation and, You'll never, ever, ever know what that meant to us. And um, again, guys, words cannot express it. It just can't. The burden you 
the burden you guys have taken off of me and my husband for the next couple months is just, it's just unbelievable that I can lay my head down at night and not worry and not worry about my residents and not worry about my employees because it's not just Mike and I that you've helped it. This wasn't about the medical bills. It was about keeping my business running and keeping employees. So, um, I could have some time off while Mike is recovering. And, you know, I have a, a girl that works for me and she's got a little boy and, you know, and we live in a small town and, and she loves what she does and we love what we do. And, and my brother that works for me, he has three kids. So I worry about them and, and keeping food on their table and a roof over their head. And, and so I just, I want to just express that you guys, that it wasn't just Mike and I, but you helped so many in that process of what we're going through. And, um, it's going to help for the next four or five months. And, and Mike did, his doctor did say, you know, minimum until he gets back to work full time will be four months. But the way Mike's going, yeah, um, 100% he should be back around the fourth month. He just has to build up the strength and his, his ribs have to heal because, he, you know, of course they had to crack his ribs open to get to his heart. And he's been having a lot of back pain, but... He went to the doctor the other day and the doctor just said, wow, she just could not believe that Mike was healing and as fast as he was. And he just looks so good, you guys. He just looks absolutely wonderful. And it's just driving him absolutely bonkers just sitting around doing nothing. And, you know, even the other morning, I, came, I was getting one of the residents up and I smelt food and I was like, what? And came upstairs and he's cooking sausage and I'm just like what are you doing he's like I can't just sit around and do nothing and I feel so bad that you're working all the time and it's like I'm not working all the time you know I'm pulling long shifts but there's days that I do get time off so don't worry about me I'm I can do it you know I'm still young I'm 44 years old if mentally yeah it's long hours but I do have days off where I have something to look forward to and um, so with that, you guys, he's just, he, it's driving him crazy that he can't do anything. The, the doctor said he kind of had to act like he had dinosaur, dinosaur arms. Um, so when he's reaching for things, he can't reach because it stretches on his ribs and, you know, he was hooked up to all these IVs and tubes. And so all that's healing and, um, you know, winter's coming, so there's there's things that have to be done. But so we've been having to call my son a lot and having him come over and do this and that. And we're just not the kind of people that even if it is family to say, hey, I need you to come over and help me do this and this and that. You know, we just feel so bad when we have to call upon people to help, especially when I can't do something you know, if it's heavy or whatever that I can't physically do, then we're calling my son constantly and he doesn't have a problem. But again, guys, it's just when, when you've never had to cry out for help, because that's basically what we're doing is crying out for help. Um, it's, it's a hard thing to, to deal with when you did everything all by yourself your whole life. You know, Mike and I are a team and what I can't do, he does, and what he can't do, I, I do, and we've always just relied on each other, so, you know, just trying to accept help is still really, really hard for us, um, but we're learning, we're learning every day, and we're learning through, through Christ that, that people do love us, and they do care, and they do want to help. And so every day is a learning process for us, but, um, we're getting better at it, but you guys, I know I'm going on 35 minutes here. So I just, I'm going to end this video with just, I just feel like I need to name, name you guys just personally for myself. Just, I need to do this and just 
say each and every one of your guys' names. There's not many, you know, about 50. Um, just to give you a personal thank you. And for you guys um, that just could not donate, you know, I, I understand. I, I understand where you're where you guys are and there's other people you need to help and other charities that that are relying you on you or you're living on a social security pension or whatever you guys just could not give um, I understand um, but for you guys that that did donate I just wanted to give you a personal thank you and I want to thank you all that just lifted us up in prayer and continue to lift us up in prayer and we're going to need your prayers until the day we leave you guys. So please just remember Mike and I in your prayers. And um, we're praying each and every day for every single one of you guys. Um, but um, just we love you guys so much. I mean so, so much. And I'm going to give each and every one of you guys the biggest hug when we get home. And you guys, soon this is over. We are so so close to this life being over and getting to our real life you know it is right around the corner we are going home to jesus and there is no there's not going to be any more pain or or sorrow or diseases you know all of that's going to be gone my mind's i'm getting tired you guys um but yeah, we're we're going home. We're going home very very soon and again, it just can't come soon enough. But if he doesn't come, you know, this fall, then we're not going to give up. We're just going to keep on keeping on. We're going to keep on watching and um before you know it, he's he'll be here, you guys. He will be here. Again, this is not our home. It never was. We're here for one reason and one reason only, and that's to bring people to Christ and let them know that Jesus does love them and Jesus did die on the cross and he is our Father in heaven who loves us so very much. And, you know, I know a lot of people are struggling with sin and, um, just like the Lord will never forgive me for the sins that I did. No, you guys, there's not a sin that he will not forgive. There's not one sin. It doesn't matter how many sins he did, how bad the sins were. Jesus loves you. He created you. He wants you to come to him with a repenting heart. And once you do, you guys, he will come into your heart and, and you are forever his, you know. Um, so you guys, again, let's just keep on praying for the lost and, you know, even if there's only one day left, we still got to keep on praying and, you know, I'm seeing these, these videos, especially from like living water and these, these people that go out and minister to, um, people on the streets and people are coming to Christ every single day, you guys hundreds of people if not thousands so we understand i get it i understand why god has delayed um his coming because you know just think about if we were god you know and and we had all these children we want every single one of them to be saved but there is going to be that day where enough is enough he's got to come and get us and and you know, not, and I've said this over and over too, you know, just because you don't make it in the rapture does not mean that you're not going to go home and inherit the kingdom of God. You just have to learn the hard way. But it's going to be sad for those people that have to learn the hard way. They have to go through, oh, I don't even want to think about it, just all the horrible things that are going to happen after we're out of here. But you know, we can go home and know that God is God and he loves each and every one of us. He loves our loved ones more than we love them, way beyond what we love them. So, you know, the Lord is going to take care of them and he's going to guide them. And 
he's going to do whatever he has to do to bring them to repentance and believe them, bring them to believing in all that we've been saying all along that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the King of Kings and there's no other way to the Father but by him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And I know through the tribulation, most people are going to come to Christ. The, they just, they have to, you know, they're going to know that we were telling the truth. But until that day, you guys, we just got to keep giving it our all. However way you want to do it, just do whatever you can, you know, and I said, we're going to be rewarded. And that's a promise, you guys, we will be rewarded. Um, and every single soul counts, you guys, hell is real. And many people are going to go there, but every single soul counts so if we can just save one isn't it worth it it's so worth it whether you have to preach for the next 50 years say jesus wasn't coming for 50 years but if you had to preach every day for 50 years just to save one soul is it not worth it absolutely you guys so you know i just felt like i had to say that I feel like I got to say a lot of things, but I'm already on this video for 41 minutes. So you guys, again, from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of Mike's heart, we thank you. Belinda J, Hannah H, Janet F, Lee and Carolyn B, Yelena G, Linda W, Gazelle D, Kristen A, Ann C, Rebecca P, Mercedes P, Katie H, Jeff K, Russ and Doris S, Sue and Jeff L, Judy Herrera, oops, I'm sorry, Judy, I said your last name, um, I didn't want to mention last names in case they didn't want to be mentioned, but somebody just pulled up in my driveway, so I got distracted. Tim and Lori F, Clint and Terry C. Um, I hope I didn't already say these. Judy G, Wayne M, Elizabeth L, Sherry V, Joey G, Jennifer N, Jenny and Scott B, Vivian W, Gary J, Diana and Little Haley, I love you guys. Sam P, Sherry P, Judy G, Scott M, Donna W, Nissa M, Tammy D, Judy H, Gabby M, Dag Maui FT. I hope I said that right. Cindy C. Tiffany O, Raphael A, Eric C, Cheryl S, Evelina A, Jennifer W, Nikki N, Barbara D, Pam D, and Dale B. Desiree, I love you, girl. Um... She was a lady that I had said in my video that um, Mike had to have that sleep apnea test that he's he's basically stopped sleeping or stops breathing in his sleep. And they had been talking about putting him on a CPAP. He hasn't been diagnosed um, as having sleep apnea, but when he was in the ho hospital, they said, yeah, he's he's pretty much got it. But... They can't physically um, diagnose them with that, but Desiree did not hesitate, and um, she offered her, us her husband's CPAP. I don't know why he doesn't need it anymore, but she has a CPAP, and she's sending it to us. Um, and, you know, honestly, that's probably a couple thousand dollars. I have no idea how much that runs and I offered to at least give her the shipping and handling she said no then it wouldn't be a blessing so take it as a blessing so Desiree thank you 
thank you to every single one of you guys that I mentioned and I love each and every one of you like I said every dollar counts and I know we're all on a different financial scale so whether it was ten dollars a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars you guys I know you guys gave what you could and when we received what we did in the mail I was just I was so shocked because I know many people reached in their wallet and sent cash and gave us their last dollars that they had in their you know maybe it wasn't their last dollars but in their wallet they gave their last couple dollars because there was you know like a hundred and sixty four dollars a hundred and twenty two dollars kind of thing so they were throwing dollar bills in there as well and that just touched my heart so deeply because I know many of you guys especially over 65 are you know on social security and and you can barely make ends meet and and um you guys just again gave without hesitation and um you guys just, again I feel so guilty I just I feel so guilty because I know there's so many people that need it more than we do and um all I can all I can do is pray and ask the Lord to give it back to you guys ten times fold and and bless you guys abundantly and and just touch your hearts that if, if you guys can afford to to help people when you guys see people in need just don't hesitate just give and and I promise the Lord I'll give it back to you and if you guys can help Tessa please do like I said I'm gonna leave the links in the description box below just pray on it. I know the Lord will touch you guys. And if you can't give, it's okay. If you can give next month, then then do so. You know, wherever you can. Just, again, guys, we have to be the Lord's hands and feet and do what we can and carry our brothers and sisters and know that we're doing it for the Lord. If anything, we're doing it for the Lord. And when we do it in the name of Father God, he will bless us to the fullest. He will give it back. He promises this, you guys. So, again, if you can't give right now, just whenever you can, do so. Um, I love each and every one of you. And I hope and pray that I will see you guys so very, very soon. Take care and God bless.